The U.S. and Canada are urging de-escalation as Israel threatens imminent retaliation on Iran. And this weekend, the Hamas ally launched an unprecedented direct drone and missile assault on Israel. But almost all of it was downed by Israel, the U.S., and other allies, including Jordan. Iran's attack came after an Israeli strike on an Iranian consulate in Syria earlier this month. For the latest now, we'll take you to the United Nations and Canada's UN Ambassador, Bob Ray. Hi, Ambassador Ray. Pleasure to welcome you back to our show. Thanks for making the time. Thank you, Vashi. Good to be with you. Do you have any sense, Ambassador, or information about how imminent uh, retaliation might be and at what scale it might happen? No. That's, a, that's the simplest and most honest answer I could give. No, I don't. Are there any conversations happening involving yourself or other Canadian delegates about sort of alongside U.S. efforts to try and prevent escalation, uh, how that might work? I think many of the discussions are happening um, directly between uh, a number of countries like ours in Canada and uh, the United States and many other countries that are have long-standing relationships with, uh, with Israel. Um, and pr pr in trying to have those conversations, um, express the I think what is a, what is a strong consensus. For example, you would have seen the press release yesterday from the G7 countries, mm -hmm. a very strong consensus that it, this is not a time to be to be retaliating because of the the risks of um, greater escalation that are that are involved in that. Uh, how how that is going is is an ongoing question uh, and I think it's something that is of great concern but it's not something that uh, I can discuss any more than saying of course of course conversations are happening and people are expressing viewpoints and then ultimately it's the people around Prime Minister Netanyahu and his government who make a, a, a decision. Is it the Canadian position that there not be any retaliation whatsoever? Uh, I spoke with Israel's ambassador yesterday who said basically no retaliation is, is not an option given the direct nature of the attack from Iran. My, my sort of reading between the lines of the statements for in particular, for example, from the G7 or the White House was that that retaliation be constrained if it does happen in order to mitigate against the possibility of escalation. What is the Canadian position specifically? Well, I think, I think we, we, one of the things that is important to remember is that many of the steps that were outlined for example, in yesterday's speech to the UN Security Council by um, the, the Israeli ambassador, um, we're not, he was not talking about unilateral steps by, by, by Israel. He was talking about the kinds of joint steps on sanctions, the joint steps on snapback, the joint steps on ways of increasing pressure on Iran, showing Iran that it's not business as usual. Um, uh, the ambassador yesterday made some comment about this is no time to press the snooze button. I don't think anybody's pressing any snooze buttons today. That's not what's happening. What, what, so we need to understand that when we talk about retaliation, um, it's not only about what unilateral steps Israel might be thinking about. It's about what additional measures other countries might take. How significant is it in your view that Iran did conduct this direct attack and i say direct very specifically because of course there have been other attacks but by proxy you know so called in a so-called shadow war i remember talking to you the day after the october 7th attack and you were pretty certain even then of their involvement in in that terrorist attack how significant is what happened this weekend in your view oh it's very significant it's a direct um, attempt at a massive attack which was foiled the attack itself was completely unsuccessful. But the fact that they attempted it, and not just on paper, but by sending uh, cruise missiles and ballistic missiles and drones and everything else is, is extremely serious. They did give a lot of warning that that's what they were gonna do. They did announce in advance that this is what we're doing. And it proved, I think, the strength of Israeli defenses and also the, the, uh, the efforts of other allies in assisting Israel in, in its self-defense, um, which is certainly covered by Article 51 of the Charter, uh, but but I, I I do think it's a it's a very significant uh, event. Um, the question becomes 
when you put that alongside all of the other the other major issues that we're dealing with in the Middle East, Gaza, um, what's happening in North Lebanon and elsewhere, um, whatever happens, I have two basic views. Whatever happens has to be well thought out. It can't be just a, an impulsive counterpunch to a punch. It has to be much more well thought out than that. And secondly, <clears throat> it's not something that Israel should think, well, this is just our, this is our war, guys, we'll handle it. It's not true at all. Um, Israel's self-defense would not have been successful without the assistance of other parties. It, it kind of in that vein, I wanted to ask you, and you had referenced earlier about how, you know, even the comments from the ambassador at the UN weren't about unilateral action, but rather action that, that allies could take together. The ambassador has specifically like put out on social media and in public statements that he would like to see the Canadian government recognize the IRGC as a terrorist entity. That's something Parliament voted, uh, including most Liberals, in favor of back in 2018, yet it has yet to come to fruition. Uh, do you think that Canada should do that? And can you explain to Canadians watching tonight why it hasn't happened yet? Um, the answer to both questions is, uh, in, in terms of, certainly the answer to the last question is, I can't explain it. But what I can say is that I think the thinking behind uh, the government's uh, process in, in, in dealing with this question, it's not something that people sort of stop thinking about or something that we're not, you know, that isn't being reviewed or whatever. But I think the thing that's of great concern is that they, the IRGC is, is a very big, big institution. Um, and to label everybody who works in it a certain way um, is not necessarily a reflection of what everybody who works in it actually thinks. So we've tended to be more targeted. We've tended to be much more specific about looking at the leadership, of looking at named people, and of really being tough on those, on those sanctions. Um, and I think that's a process of reviewing that and then reviewing what other countries are doing because whatever we do is not going to be successful unless other countries do it as well. And then you have to say, how successful can that be? So I think we're all <clears throat> assessing uh, what are the consequences of these actions. And while, of course, we appreciate the advice of the government of Israel, it's not exactly new. Um, Israel has been talking about this for a very long time. And I think it's really a matter of looking at, well, what are the consequences of that? And what are the other measures that we can take and what other things can we do? And that's something that's being reviewed on, a, on an hourly basis by the government of Canada, as it is by every other government in the G7 and many other governments uh, who are equally concerned about what Iran is, is doing and what it has done. Is there any evidence, though, that the federal government can produce to show Canadians, because it has been under consideration for years now, like you pointed out, it's it's not new. Uh, there are many Iranians, for example, the diaspora who lives here, who have been asking the Canadian government following the shooting down of the uh, of the plane carrying all those Canadians and a host of other amends, events, including the death of Masa Amini, uh, not too long ago to do the same thing. It, it continues to be under consideration. Is there evidence that the federal government has in its hands, for example, to show that the approach they're taking is more effective than the one the U.S. has taken in listing this as a terrorist entity? Well, I, I don't usually do this, Vashi, but I think I, I think you should really put that question to to, to those people in, 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 in public safety and in CSIS and other organizations that have a much closer, you know, control of that file. All I would say to you is that, from what I know um, and what I've what I've uh, talked talked to people about, is uh, governments are looking very carefully at what are the consequences of these steps and are there other ways that we can do things that will that will be less um, unpredictable in terms of their consequences. Okay, I'll leave it on that note, Ambassador. And just to be transparent, the reason I ask you is because I have asked those questions of everyone you mentioned and nobody has yet to provide me with an answer, but I take your point and I appreciate you making the time tonight. Thank you so much. Just keep asking, Ambassador, you'll get there. <laughs> I will, thanks Ambassador.